Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about some tests to determine if a series would converge or not. What we've looked at so far is using partial sums and writing those partial sums as a sequence to determine if we see a pattern, if we can tell if those sums are approaching a specific value or not. So for practice sake, because we're going to talk a little bit more about these two, will you please find some partial sums and determine if the series seems to converge, and if so, approximately to what value. So go take a moment and do that, please. Okay, so if I'm looking at this first one, if I look at the some of the partial sums, the partial sums would be, S sub 1 would be the first term, so 1 over 1 squared would just be 1. The second partial sum is the first term plus the second term, so 1 plus 1 fourth, 1.25. The third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms, 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth. I'm going to start letting my calculator do the rest of this. So I would end up with 1.3611. And the fourth partial sum, because right now I can see, all right, we're growing, but will it ever stop growing? So let's look at the fourth partial sum is 1.4236. The fifth partial sum, 1.46361. So it looks like we're growing still, but kind of seems like we're slowing down. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Let's look at the 50th partial sum. I mean, your calculator is doing all of this for you anyway. So if I look at the 50th partial sum, 1.625, so that's a substantial growth, because I was kind of starting to think maybe 1.5, but now we're at 1.625. Let's look at the 500th partial sum, 1.6429. Okay, we're definitely slowing down, and without trying the 1,000th or the 5,000th, and I hope you actually do, it kind of seems like this is starting to slow down. It seems like this sum is probably going to approach something. So this is why we're going to determine some tests because right now, based off of what we're doing, probably it, it's going to converge, but we're not sure. So we'll just say this sum seems to converge. And I'm not getting very accurate because of time. We're going to look more accurately as we go on. But I'm going to say to about 1.65, and maybe it's 1.75. And I hope you got as accurate as possible. I'm just going to say to about 1.65. Not very accurate, and I would hope that you would be more accurate than me. And as this chapter progresses, we're going to get really accurate when we can. So this is about 1.65, maybe. Okay, let's look at the next one, the square root of n. So I found the first partial sum that's plugging 1 into this. The square root of 1 is 1. The second partial sum is the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2. So that's 2.414, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. If I look at the third partial sum, I can see this is growing pretty fast. And that kind of makes sense because... The square root of 5, then, is even bigger than the square root of 4. So it's 2 point something. And then the square root of 9 is even bigger than that. That's 3. So now I'm adding on 3, and I'm adding on larger and larger numbers as I go. So it, it kind of makes sense, actually, it, more than kind of. This makes sense that these sums, these partial sums, are just getting larger and larger. So this one's pretty obvious. We can say that this sum definitely diverges. We can say that with certainty because the, the terms we're adding on are just getting bigger and bigger. And that's something that um, that idea is going to come up a lot. Like what we're adding, the more we add on, the sum is, there's no way it's going to converge. There's no way we're going to approach a certain value. And there's a test for that. There's a name for that. It's called the nth term test. And this is actually a divergence test. In other words, this test is to test for divergence only, not for convergence. And we'll talk about why here. So in order for a series to converge, it's necessary for the sequence that represents it to converge to zero. 
So that, that's got to be a requirement. If the terms are not getting smaller and smaller, approaching zero, there's no way a series could ever converge. So here's the nth term test. Given a series, so given the sum of a sequence of numbers, if the limit of that sequence of numbers does not equal zero, in other words, if those terms are not approaching zero, but instead approaching a different value other than zero, we can say for sure that the series will diverge because these terms aren't getting small enough to make us get to a point where we can actually find the answer or find the sum. However, the converse is not true. In other words, just because those terms are approaching zero doesn't mean that the series is going to converge. Think about what we did with improper integrals. We had functions that were approaching the x-axis. And in order to find the area under the curve, we needed to determine, did that function approach the x-axis fast enough? It's a similar situation here. So just because these terms are approaching zero, we don't know if those terms are approaching zero fast enough. Okay, let me give you the most famous example of that. So it's, it's the most notable example is the harmonic series. So the harmonic series is this. We're going to use this a lot to compare this to other series and see if they behave similarly. So the harmonic series, I'm going to write out a few terms for this series. I'm going to write kind of small because I'm going to try to prove a point here. Sorry for the tedium, but it's going to help here in just a second, I promise. Okay, that's it, I swear. So we've got this, I've got the first 16 terms of the harmonic series. And I want to show you an example of why this series, even though those terms are definitely approaching zero, I'm going to show you why we can say for certain that this sum will not converge. Even though those terms are getting smaller and smaller, they're not getting smaller fast enough. So I'm going to compare this to another series that has no name, and I don't know the, the, the uh, expression for it or the general term. But let's just say we're adding 1 plus 1 half, so it's going to start out the same, but then this is one fourth and that's one fourth. And then I'm going to make my next terms one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and one eighth. Oops. And then I'm going to make all of the next terms one sixteenth. And there's a reason for this, and I'll explain why. So, first of all, let's compare these two terms to, or these two series to each other. Okay, I know for a fact that one third is larger than one fourth, and one fifth is larger than one eighth, one sixth is larger than one eighth, one seventh is larger than one eighth, one ninth is larger than one sixteenth, and so on. So I know that the harmonic series is larger than the series I just wrote, and I hope you would agree. The sum would be bigger. Okay, so now if I take the series that I wrote and start adding some of these values together. You'll see that I had a little method to my madness. I'm going to use a different color to prove or to show it a little more clearly. I know this is 1 plus 1 half and 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is also 1 half. 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth also 1 half and then all of these these 8 1 sixteenths is also 1 half and if I kept going with the same pattern if I have one and I add one half plus one half plus one half plus one half over and over again, my sum is getting larger and larger. So right now in just the terms that I have, I've got one plus 
one, that's two, plus one. So far my sum is three and will only get bigger from there. So even though these terms were getting smaller, one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, those, each of those subsequent terms is actually approaching zero, I can see that the sum will actually diverge. Now we already talked about the fact that the harmonic sum is going to be greater than the one that I just made up. So I know that if this sum is not going to diverge, neither will the harmonic series. So we know that because of this, because the harmonic series is even larger, we know that the harmonic series will always diverge. This is going to be really, really important. We are going to use this as kind of a base for so many other things that we're going to do in this unit. Because we know a lot about it, and it kind of bucks the whole system that even though these terms are getting smaller, the sum is not getting smaller. The sum will, in fact, keep growing and grow to infinity. Okay, so just remember what we just did, this nth term test, is not determining whether something will converge. All this is saying is we know for a fact that something will diverge and it may or may not converge. We won't know yet until we find out if those terms approach zero fast enough. All right, so that's one, one test. We're gonna end up having like eight or nine different tests that we're gonna use to determine if a series will converge or not. This is the first one. And the nth term test is always where I start. I look at the series, I look at the sequence of terms, do those terms approach zero? If they do not, this series will diverge. I cannot find a sum. The sum will be too large. Move on. We're done. So it's the first thing I look for every time I use the nth term test.